this video, we'll start to set up the order checkout for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Lillard here from CodeMe.com. And in the last video, we set up our order models. In this video, we want to start to build out the checkout process. So we'll start by creating a checkout button on our cart summary page, and that'll go to an order summary page that shows a little summary of your order and then allows you to either add your shipping address if you haven't already, or if you already have in the past, it'll pre-populate that. And then it'll have a little button at the bottom where you can continue on and enter your credit card and billing and all that good stuff. And that's what we're going to start to build out in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Gibbash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create a sort of checkout page, right? So when we go to our cart summary, we can click the checkout button and it'll go to that page. So I think we want to put this in our payment app because this is all sort of payment and checkout and all that good stuff. So let's go to our payment app here and let's come down to our URLs.py file. And let me just copy this last one here. And what do we want to call this? Let's call this checkout, creating a checkout page. And this is going to be views.checkout. And let's name this checkout. All right, go ahead and save that. So we can close this. Now let's go to our views.py file in that same directory. And let's create a view for that. So let's define checkout. I want to pass in the request. And I'm just going to copy this guy right here. And we want to return render request and we'll send it to payment slash checkout.html. Now we don't have this file yet, so we need to create it. So let's go ahead and save this and head over to our templates payments and right click and let's create a new file. File save as checkout.html. And let's see, let me go to my, let's go to our cart directory and grab the cart summary page and just sort of copy that over. I don't think we're really going to need any of this Ajax stuff right here. So let's just get rid of all of that. And if we come up here to the top, instead of it saying shopping cart, let's have it say what checkout, something like that. And then let's say underneath there, review your order. And we don't need all of this cart stuff. So I'm just gonna, Actually, we might need some of this later, but for now, <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Okay, so stuff. Go ahead and save this. And now we need a button probably on, let's see, if we head back over to the website, go to our cart, say down here underneath our total, let's put a little button that says check out. So you go to your, you check your cart. You see all your stuff. You're like, yeah, I want to buy this stuff. Let's go ahead and check out. So let's put a button down here and maybe let's move all this over here. Maybe that looks better. I don't know. <laughs> right. So this is our cart page. So we head back over to our cart, cart summary. And let's scroll down to, here's our total stuff. And let me just wrap all this in a div. And let's say align equals right. Close that div. And then here, let's just put a link for now. That should work fine. And let's say checkout. And let's make this into a button. So let's give it a class of BTN, BTN dash success. I think that's a green button. I kind of like that. And let's give this a Django URL tag of checkout. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now let's head over to the website and see. Hit reload, come down. All right, we've got this nice checkout button. We click it, goes to our checkout page, says stuff. All right, we're good to go. Okay, so now let's create a little box with an order summary. And this is just to, you know, make sure you can glance at it and say, okay, this looks right. So that it'll take everything from our cart, you know, each book and each item, and then the total and sort of display it in a, just a little card like thing. So, Let's actually first, let's log out and go to register and a register page is nice and centered right here, these little boxes. So I'm going to grab the code for that real quick. Let's see, that was going to be in our store directory templates register. 
yeah, here we go. This div class row bunch of stuff right here. Let's go ahead and copy this into our checkout page. And instead of having a div with class container, let's do it like this. And I need to close that div, close that div, and close that div. And let's just sort of move all these over. Now, when we type in stuff, <laughs> let's head back to the website, make sure that worked. Uh, log back in real quick here and go to check out. Okay, and it's a little more centered now. This will look better in just a minute. So now I want to go to get bootstrap. We've been using bootstrap throughout this thing. Click on docs here and then come down here to card. And let's just kind of look through here and find something we like. Maybe, maybe this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this head back over here. And instead of stuff, we're going to paste all that in. And let's kind of tap this over. And instead of saying featured, let's have it say order summary. And we don't need a button here. We'll get rid of that. We don't need any of this stuff. And here we just want our stuff. <laughs> let's go ahead and save this. I'll head back over here and see how that looks. Okay, that's starting to come together a little bit. So now we need the order summary. So that's going to be at least probably the title of the item, the price of the item, and the quantity, and then sort of at the bottom, we'll have a total. So let's head back over here and let's head over to our views.py file. We're going to need to pass in all of our cart summary stuff into our views.py file. So let's go to our cart view. And here's the cart summary. Let's just copy all of this and bring it back to our payment app views.py paste this in here uh, let's move this up to here we're going to do a lot of copying and pasting in this video i think okay so here we're getting our shopping cart and getting the quantities and the totals and returning all of that in there but in order to access all of that we need to import it up here so again i'm going to go back to our views.py file and we need this cart thing but it's not from dot cart. This is going to be from, let's see, cart dot cart, because it's the cart directory we're pulling this from. We want to import our cart and then we can, you know, use our cart stuff like that. Okay, that looks good. So we're now passing our cart products, our quantities, and our totals in, and we can do stuff with it. So let's head over to our cart summary page and let's grab some code from there. So there's definitely going to be a cart stuff, so we don't need that if statement. But here we can call this for loop to get all the products in our cart. So let's save this, head over to our checkout page. And instead of stuff here, we want that. And right away, I want to always end my for so I don't lose track of that. Now inside of here, we can call product whatever. So what do we want to do here? Well, we probably want the product dot name and then we need the price. And then we also want the quantity. Well, the price, you remember, some of our items have sale prices. If we come back to the home page, these are all regularly priced, but this guy here is a sale price. So we need some logic to, in order to figure out whether it's a sale or not. So uh, let's see, if we go back to our cart summary page, we've got that logic already right here, if product is sale. So I'm just gonna grab that and let's go, if product is sale, and right away, I'm gonna end my if. So if it is on sale, what do we want? Well, we want the product sale price, All right? So let me copy this from there. There we go. Else, so we need an else statement here. And maybe we can tab this over, maybe. There we go. Else, if it's not on sale, then we just want the product price. So let me copy this. All right, that looks good. And now we need the quantity. So also let's come in our cart summary page and let's just, oh, now we've got a whole bunch of code for this as well. So let me just copy this and paste it in. Uh, this is not going to be an option. So we get rid of that code, have this over. 
So remember our quantities is set up as a Python dictionary. So to get the key value pairs out of here, we need to loop through and grab the key value pairs. And for each key, we looked up the product. If that equals the key, that means it's in the cart and then we can pop out the value. So if you're not familiar with all this code, go back in the playlist and watch the videos where we set all this stuff up. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. So, okay, that looks pretty good now. Uh, let's see, we probably want a couple of line breaks and that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and see how badly we messed that up. We probably did. I went through that very fast. So let's come down here, check out. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now this is all on one line. I don't love that. Let's put some line breaks right there. So for our quantity, let's see right here above that, let's put a line break. And also let's make this kind of small text. So I'm going to give this a small text and let's close our small tag, save this, head back over here, see how this looks. All right, Python programming, 1999, we bought two of them. Tkinter programming, 998, we bought five of them. And we're going to want some space underneath there. So, okay, that looks good. Now we also probably want a total, right? So you could at a glance see how much you're about to spend. <laughs> that makes sense. So let's come back over here. And first I'm gonna come down here and give a couple of line breaks underneath this guy. Save this, reload this. All right, that looks better, <laughs> right? That was bugging me. So inside of here, uh, let's go total. And I'm gonna save this and reload just to make sure we're in the right spot. Yep, there we go, total. It says total there too. That's no good. Oh, what's going on here? Ah, we want this outside of our for loop. There we go. Okay, so we got total. And if we look at our views.py file, do we have a total? We do, we have totals. So we can just type in our totals. Save this guy and hit reload. That's looking not great. We need some space to have the space and maybe we want to make this strong. I don't know, whatever you like. I don't know. I don't love that. Let's take out that strong. Now, if there's some sort of error, if you're like, oh, yeah, I have five. I actually only wanted four. We need some little button here that we can go back to our cart and sort of modify this stuff easily. So let's underneath here add another button and let's go a href equals and let's go, um, what do we want this to say? Something like update items, something like that. And let's give this a class of BTN. And then I wanna make this a small button. So we'll call BTN dash SM and this is just pure bootstrap. And then also let's change the color to BTN dash outline dash secondary. So it'll be gray, but outline. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Well, actually let's, let's add the link first. Before we take a look, we want the URL to point to our cart underscore summary page. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, hit reload, see how that looks. Oh, we need more line breaks. <laughs> I'm line break crazy. I just slap them in like they're handy. Okay, so reload. That looks good. Now we can click this, go back. Oh, actually we only want four update. Boom. There we go. Now we check out that's changed. That's changed. Okay. So looking good so far. Now we want underneath here, uh, the box for our shipping stuff. So let's come back over here to, let's go to get bootstrap again, very quickly come down to our cards, grab another one of those cards. Cause let's keep the sort of same theme going. And there we go, header footer, I like this one. So let's come back here and let's go test, save this, head back over here, hit reload. Okay, sure enough, that's the right spot. So instead of test, I'm gonna pass, paste in that card. And here, let's say shipping info. And we don't need a button. We don't need this stuff. What we do need is a form. So let's go our shipping underscore form dot as underscore P. Now we don't have this yet, but we can create it. And down here, let's create a button. 
while we're at it. And this is going to be a uh, type. Well, let's make it a link for now. We can update this later. Let's go a ref equals. Let's say continue to billing. And for now, let's just put a little hashtag thing there. And let's give this a class of BTN and then BTN dash secondary. Save this. Now we need this shipping form to be put into the page and that's going to be done by our views.py file. And up until now, we don't have anything in there. So we're going to have to add that all in. This video is getting a little bit long, but I think we can knock this out with some horrific copying and pasting. So we're going to need some shipping form stuff. So let's head over to our, let's see, uh, all the way down to our store directory and our let's see update info page no we want the view for that which is again our update info so first we need this you know to check if they're logged in or not so let's grab that and i'm going to put this underneath here stuff else more stuff so if they're not logged in we can just do this because remember a user doesn't necessarily have to be logged in in order to buy something from us, right? They can be checking out as a guest or whatever. So uh, this is going to be like check out as guest. Here will be check out as logged in user. All right, so go back to that views.py file and we need our shipping form, All right? So I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Head back over here and paste this in. Now, um, that works there. We're also going to need this down here, but there will be no instance. The instance is where we're sort of piping in their saved information. And if they're a guest, they don't have saved information. So we'll get rid of that there. Now we need this shipping form. So let's come back up here and let's grab the shipping form. Where's that? Right here. So we need to import that and that might do it. Let's go ahead and save this. I feel like we missed something, but yeah, you know, shipping user is not defined yet. Yeah, we need the shipping user. Of course we do. Uh, because on our shipping form, we're calling the shipping user, right? So if we go back to our views.py file and come down here to our update user, here we have our shipping user. So let's copy this. There we go. Let me comment shipping form. And here let's comment shipping user. Now, in order to get the user, we need to have the request user ID. We need the shipping model. So let's head back over to our views.py file and let's find the uh, let's see shipping address model. There it is. So that. What else might we need? We're going to need the user. Let's come down here and look. Uh, well, that seems like that should work. So, okay, let's save this and give that a try. What else did we miss? Oh, there we go. Now, this shipping info does not look correct. So, something has gone wrong here because I am logged in. We haven't passed in that shipping form. So let's come down here and pass that in. I feel like I'm going through this very quickly without a lot of explanation, but hopefully you've been watching throughout the series and you know what all this stuff is. So you're able to follow along. So, okay, let's go ahead and save that. Now let's go back to our checkout page and where's that button? Let's add a line break there. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now we come back here and hit reload. Boom. We have that. I want to, the line break underneath that button as well. Maybe two. All right. So we've got our order summary. We've got our shipping info that's already been saved because we're logged in. Now, if we want to change this, we'll have to account for that. We'll do that in the next video. This one's getting very long. But now let's log out and give this another try. So let's go to, well, first we go to shopping cart. There's no button because there's no, you know, there's nothing added, added in our cart. So let's add a little something. Let's add two of these. 
Let's add a thing that's on sale for $6.99. Remember that. Let's just get one of these. Now let's go check out $6.99. The, uh, the sale price is correct. Uh, and here we don't have anything because we have not added this shipping form. We didn't add that to this guy down here. So let me come down here and oh, what's the next one up? Let's grab this. And here we were checking out as guest. We'll add that in there. Okay, so save that. Head back over here. Now we hit reload. And boom, we have this information. Now, if we just fill this out and click a button, it doesn't do anything yet. We haven't set all that up. We're going to need to set a mechanism to keep track of this stuff as a guest user to get it into the next screen before we add it to the order. We'll do all that in the next video. Like I said, this one's getting very long, but yeah, we are moving right along. We are right in the middle of getting our checkout all sorted out. Very good. So just remember, we're going to have two separate systems here, one for checking out as a user, one for checking out as a guest. Obviously, this one is guest. We can again log back in as admin or whatever. Go to our cart. Go to checkout. Our shipping info is there. Remember, you can also go to your profile user info, and that's where that shipping info is was sitting before. Uh, very cool. Again, I apologize, man. We went through this very quickly. I copied and pasted a lot of stuff. It was maybe hard to keep track. We were going so fast. Maybe watch the video again, but hopefully you'll understand once you take a beat and say, oh, this is what we're doing. We're just taking stuff that we've done in past videos and sort of pasting it over into this little page. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.